Now, we all know just how fast F1 drivers are on dry land, but how do they fare on water? I'm here in Saint Tropez with Oracle Red Bull Racing as they get put through their paces on F50 foiling catamarans. The boats can do uh, above 90 kilometers an hour. Oh. Yeah, it's just, you know, but just the sailing boat, it's yeah, pretty cool. Like so we have six crew on the boat. And so you guys will be filling the six roll today. And the boats are like heavily undermanned on purpose to make it really quite challenging. You guys done much sailing? No? No, no, no perfect. It's <laughs> yeah, it's probably a good thing. Yeah. Jump on, boys. So there's a whole bunch of different functions we can change here. We can change settings on the rudders, or we can change some power settings, different ratios on the foil. Yeah. Like people don't think about these kind of things that you have it on. Uh... Yeah. Next, the drivers got to take a look at the control room where CellGP, unlike F1, allows all the teams to access each other's race data. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. It's really comparable to us, you know, what we do pre-weekend, during the weekend. During the race, we run so many simulations, up to four billion simulations, to just to figure out the right strategy. Unfortunately, we are not able to see what other teams do. Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice sometimes. Yeah. 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 You see oh. this one here? That's the British hitting the Japanese. Oh. That is... I guess I got a penalty for that. <laughs> <laughs> After a morning of being trained up, it was time for Max and Checo to hit the water, as I followed in close pursuit. Accelerating now. So as they and see they're just about to pop up on the foils. Oh, there they go. So there they, once they're on the foils, they start to accelerate to max speed. And turning. have just shown Max and Checo how it works. They're doing a driver change as we're speaking, and they're going to get behind the wheel of these boats. Okay, Max. Yeah. You can see us straight at that mark in front. So we just want to go around just to the left of that mark. It looks quite scary when they first get up on one side. Speed is saying 52, so basically 52 kilometers. But the wind speed's probably only about 12. Now we're getting a little pressure, so you can slowly start turning to the right. What's yeah. it feel like to the car? Uh, it's a completely different experience, but it's really cool. Nice, Max. Smoked them. They're back there. We survived. Very lovely. So, Max, great location to catch up. How was that, first of all? I mean, epic. Yeah, it was a really nice experience. Um, I've never really done anything like it, you know, so um, yeah, really, really nice to be here. You know, we do a lot of uh, different kind of things, but these uh, are the days that you, you enjoy. Mm -hmm, I can imagine. I mean, we've seen you do a lot of jet skiing. Would you say that, you know, that makes you a bit of an adrenaline junkie overall? Well, I think it's also just Red Bull in general, you know, mm -hmm. they, they like adrenaline and um, yeah, it's really fun, you know, to be to be part uh, of Red Bull and do these kind of like fun, um, fun stuff because, you know, we're traveling a lot. We have a lot of commitments, but you have these days uh, throughout the year um, you have to be there. But it's also really nice when you enjoy it. So we saw you guys got up to some incredible speeds there. So there's speed, there's adrenaline, lots of things that are similar to racing. What would you say was the biggest surprise today? Surpri well, I mean, there are more than like five, six people on the boat, right? And they all have to communicate um, and they have their own role. And of course, in Formula One, you know, you are the only one sitting in the car. And of course, you're communicating with the pit wall, but mm -hmm. you're the only one steering it. And here it's it's different. And I just found it really interesting to um, to listen to them, what they were saying and how they were operating. And it was really cool to see. Well, thank you for saying that, because that segues me exactly to where I was going to go next, which is if you had a passenger seat in your car, who in your team would you put in it? 
Well, I would take uh, GP probably. Uh, sometimes he looks at the onboards after qualifying and I can see in his eyes that he's appreciating the speed. So it would be nice if he can, uh, can experience it himself once. And I saw that there was also a lot of data sharing. I saw you were in the Oracle data center here. Is that a lot like you know, what you guys do on track in F1? Yeah, I mean, the only difference here is, is that it's open to anyone. Like every team can see what their competitor is doing, where of course in Formula One, it's, uh, it's all secret. And sometimes, of course, you would like to see what your competitor is doing. But in general, yeah, I mean, um, data is really important nowadays, of course, in Formula One and also about running billions of simulations on a Friday, Saturday night before the race. And also from our side, you know, since we've partnered with Oracle, um, you know, we went up by 25 percent in terms of calculations and simulations. So and I heard they do yeah. like something like four billion simulations per weekend. For a lot. You guys. Yeah, a lot. Wow, that's impressive. OK, well, let's talk a little bit about Formula One now. Um, I've obviously known you since the karting days, and I think amongst our generation, the name Max Verstappen was always a name everyone talked about, and we always kind of knew that you were going to be where you are today. But for you, with all the hard work that you've done, does it feel really full circle to see just how far you have come? Uh, you know, when I was go-karting, of course, I, I wanted to do the best I, I could at the time, and F1 is still so far away that you don't really think about it. You know, at the time, I was just very busy focusing on trying to win races and championships and go-karting. And then luckily, also I think that final year in go-karting went really well. You know, winning European and World Championships, that, you know, was uh, very important for me. And then, of course, you go into cars, but then again, cars are so different to go-karting. Mm -hmm. Of course, you learn the basics in go-karting, but then when you switch to, to cars, there's still a lot to learn in terms of how a racing car handles. Um, but yeah. Good year in Formula 3, got promoted to F1, and um, since then it's, it's gone really quick. But uh, it's nice to see also that, um, you know, all the guys I was fighting with, or most of them, um, in go-karting, you know, they also made it to Formula 1, and mm -hmm. now you're battling it out of Formula 1. So, yeah, I think uh, it's, a, it's a really uh, good generation in, in general. Absolutely. Well, look, you know, one thing aside is your, is your performance. You've obviously had incredible achievements, but just the fandom that you have as well, like the sea of orange that follows you around the world, it must be super special to you. Yeah, I think, um, you know, especially my home Grand Prix, but of course you see it on a lot of tracks, there's a lot of orange around and um, yeah, the support has been great and of course it's been growing over the years. Um, but yeah, when you, when you get to Zandvoort, that whole weekend, that atmosphere is, is very special. Okay, well, we've completed 16 races this season so far. You've got a comfortable lead in the championship. How would you assess your progress this year? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, it didn't start off well, but I think we recovered really well after that. And as a team, yeah, we made minimal mistakes, I would say. And yeah, we had a great run. Uh, I think also, you know, we improved the car quite well from the beginning of the year. And uh, yeah, we're having a good time, but we also know that things can change very quickly and mm -hmm. we cannot afford DNS from now onwards. But as a team, we also want to win. And every weekend we go into to try and win the race. An 11th win in 2022 for Max Verstappen. You've probably heard it already, but Michael Schumacher's record is 13 wins in a season. How close do you think you are to achieving that goal or breaking it? You know, I, I don't really look at that. I think well, at the end of the day, what is most important is that you win the championship, right? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really matter with how many wins you do it. But of course, um, you know, a few races left and we want to, uh, we want to win all of them. But you also have to be realistic. Sometimes that doesn't always happen for whatever reason. And as long as we always score points, hopefully, of course, good amount of points. But that for me, from now on, is um, yeah, also crucial. Now, Red Bull Racing in general have been a great team. But of recently, they've been almost faultless and seem to really you know, relish at the challenge, especially strategic challenges. Why would you say that that is? I mean, they won four championships before, and I think already there they were very strong. Of course, people change over time a bit. It's normal in teams, but they had a bit of a rough start, um, you know, with the new engines, and um, it took a while to be competitive again. But you, sometimes, you know, you have, to, um, you have to trust the process, and, you know, you get everyone aligned. And the motivation was never the, the problem. which is like, just lining everything up engine-wise, car-wise. And last year, finally, you know, we got it together, and we were very competitive. And yeah, you know, that championship spirit was always there. They know how to win championships. And I think that helps a lot. You know, the, the people in the team are very confident. Okay, now finally, is this the best version of Max Verstappen that we're seeing at the moment? Uh, I think naturally through experience, you, 
you become more uh, all-rounded, I would say, but I hope it's not the best um, um, ever. I mean, I, I still want to improve. I, I still want to do better in the coming years, but I mean, also that depends a lot on how competitive your car is. I mean, you can drive really well, but if you don't have the car for it, you cannot really show it sometimes. But at the moment, I'm, I'm just enjoying what I'm doing, um, but I will never be satisfied. I always want more.